welcome back to Season 5 of the Changing Earth Podcast with Sarah F. Hathaway. Blending survival fiction and fact to bring you entertaining education that will help you dream, survive, and thrive. And now, here's your host, Sarah F. Hathaway. Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the Changing Earth Podcast. This is episode number 190, season 5, episode 27. It's kind of crazy to think 190 episodes in. That's just, that's just cool right there. Uh, jiu-jitsu testing update. I am one of six females to ever pass the jiu-jitsu test and Chief Master's 30 plus years of teaching jiu-jitsu. So pretty exciting stuff. Um, you know, it kind of makes the pain of the event uh, that much more worth it. Took a lot of heart and I made it. And uh, Chief Master's requested that I um, do a blog on what that experience was like and uh, you know, all that. So uh, you can look forward to that coming out. I'll share it with you guys as well, just so you get a chance to, um, you know, see what the, the ins and outs were of that event. So a lot of fun. And we have got a great show for you today. I got Dale and Lisa back on. We're going to be discussing communication methods. And you know, Dale and Lisa and I can always talk forever. Dale and Lisa Goodwin from Survivalist Prepper. You know, they've been on my show a bunch and uh, always just awesome to have them on. So can't wait to share that interview with you later. Uh, let's see what's going on in Changing Earth World. We got the new book coming out uh, in June. Um, I've got some print copies of that in my hand. It looks gorgeous. I just love the new cover. You guys are going to be super stoked on that story. Uh, it was a lot of fun to put together. So um, definitely a adventure where you're going to be doing a lot of soul searching and it's going to make you uh, do a lot of questioning. So good stuff there. That's coming. I've still got some Changing Earth merchandise available. It's going fast. So you got to get a hold of that. Um, maybe I'll put on a coup, put on a put out a coupon code or something like that uh, just to, you know, get those, the last of my inventory moving so we can re-up re and get some more stuff in. Um, what else do I got going on? The newsletter keeps coming out. Go ahead and get subscribed to that if you want the newsletter and to stay on top of everything that's going on. Uh, subscribers are always welcome. You can do that over at my website, www.authorsarahfhathaway.com. You know, go over there, become a supporter. That would be awesome. You know, it really helps me keep the show going and make all this this effort worth the while. Um, and other than that, I have about three chapters left of book seven. So that's even further out. It's exciting stuff. And uh, it's going to keep our podcast running for a long time. So I hope you enjoyed last week's episode. I had the little twist in there, which was crazy. You know, Erica getting abducted by the bad guys. And uh, she's just, you know, going to continue wa waiting for that moment when she can make her escape. So we'll have to see what happens with that story. But in the meantime, we're going to go over back to the team, Bennett's team, and see, you know, what the repercussions are of the event that happened with Erica and all that. What what do they do afterwards? What, what are they doing? So we're going to visit with them today. And one of the things that they're doing is trying to communicate with the homesteads. And it really brought up the issue of, you know, how are we going to be communicating in an SHTF, a long-term survival situation? So Dale and Lisa are on the show to talk about that. Dale and Lisa Goodwin. Dale and Lisa Goodwin have the preparedness experience going at the end of March. Tickets are going fast, folks. Uh, this is happening in Las Vegas. It is going to be just a spectacular learning event. I'm so excited. I get to go down there, just take a little bit of time off work and everything, go out to Vegas and just do a whole bunch of learning, you know, and I'm not working, uh, so to speak, down there. So that is just really cool for me because usually when I go out to events, I don't get to do a lot of the learning because I'm involved in the teaching or selling my books and things like that. So um, I'm really excited about it. You can go ahead and get signed up for that at www.thepreparednessexperience.com. And I really hope to see you all out there. Like I say, you need to get over there and get signed up right now. Because the sooner you do it, you know, the cheaper everything is for travel. And uh, the tickets are going fast. So there, this is a limited seating event. So there's only so many people that are allowed to even come to this event. So the tickets are going fast and you need to get over there and get yours. That's at the www.thepreparednessexperience.com. 
Okay, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into chapter 27 of Dark Days in Denver. And then I've got a really good interview with uh, Dale and Lisa. I'm betting that I'm going to have some bonus audio out of this interview because it's a really long one. I've been trying very hard to keep my episodes to just an hour long. Last week, we had some great bonus um, audio as well for my subscribers. Go over there and check that out. Some cool stories that I had to clip and stuff like that just uh, for time allowance. So I'm betting that I'm going to have the same type of situation today. So you can go and check out that bonus audio if you're a subscriber. So once again, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into Chapter 27 of Dark Days in Denver. Chapter 27. Vince slowly opened his eyes. His head was heavy and the ringing thumped through it painfully. He could barely breathe behind the gas mask still attached to his face. Wiping the ash off so he could see, he tried to sit up. There was a pain in his chest that matched the pounding of his head, yet somehow it seemed to make the ringing louder. He fell back on his side, unable to cope. His eyes focused on a body next to him. Is that Kyle, he wondered. His mind was trying to remember what happened through the endless throbbing. Vince crawled closer to the body through the thick layer of ash that coated everything. He checked the man's pulse first. There was nothing. Then he pulled off Kyle's mask. Vince stared into his lifeless eyes for a moment before his thoughts went to Erica. Where is she? His mind raced. His love for her pulling him through the pain, he frantically searched the bodies. None of them were her. Erica! He tried to scream, but the pain in his chest was so intense he fell to his knees. What the hell is that anyway, he wondered, digging into his chest pocket. He found the watch his father had given him with a bullet stuck in the middle. I'll be damned, he mumbled to himself. Vince, he heard a voice calling through the hazy sunlight. Yeah, he answered out of instinct. His brain was still buzzing with pain. Vince, there you are. I've been looking for you two everywhere, Bennett called to him as he approached. Vince stood there amongst the bodies in a daze. Vince, what the hell happened here, Bennett wondered, checking the pulses of Kyle, Hensley, and Philip. Vince, Bennett called to him again before he walked over to look him in the eyes. Where's Erica, Vince? I don't know. My watch saved me, Vince stammered, showing him the trinket. He was trying, but his mind wouldn't focus, and the pounding didn't stop. I think you got saved by much more than your watch, Bennett remarked surveying the man's condition. Bennett removed Vince's helmet and showed it to him. There was a bullet lodged in the front of it. Vince reached up and touched his head. Wincing in pain, his fingers ran over a large lump. Oh, shit, Vince commented. What happened, Vince? Where's Erica? Bennett questioned urgently. We had made it through the fighting. We were headed to Sedalia, Vince mumbled, trying to remember. Merkley, Vince said, looking at Bennett. Lieutenant General Merkley, Bennett wondered. No, his fucking son. Staff Sergeant Merkley and those guys, the new recruits. We asked him for a vehicle to get Erica out, and he shot Philip. They shot us all before we could react, Vince explained. But not Erica. She's not here, Vince, Bennett said. I know, he admitted, thinking hard through the pounding. They took her. Those fucking bastards took her, Bennett. But it looks like she got one of them, Bennett commented. I don't recognize this man, and he was killed with a knife to the chest, not a bullet. From the looks of the angle, it was someone small that stabbed him. Bennett checked the man for signs of identification. He found a barcode tattooed on the man's wrist with a number above it and property of FROA written below it. Producing a small notebook from his pocket, Bennett wrote the number down. We gotta go find her, Vince said, walking off in the wrong direction. The first thing we have to do is get you some medical attention, Bennett commented, redirecting him. Bennett, they took her, Vince panicked. They took her, he screamed angrily into the air. The action made his head explode with pain, and he fell to one knee on the ground. Bennett came over to console him. We'll get her back, Vince. They won't kill her until they can make a spectacle of it, and we'll get her back before then, Bennett assured him. How do you know, Vince despaired. I promise you, Bennett said, we will get her back and we'll do it together. But we have to get info and gear. She thinks I'm dead, Vince realized looking at Bennett. Star told me in Montana when Erica thought I was going to die, she had never seen her like that. 
She was headed out to die the day you found her. Bennett stared at Vince for a moment. We're not going to lose her, Vince. I promised I would protect her. Looking to the sky, Vince and Bennett heard what they thought was thunder. Are those planes? Vince asked. How the hell can they fly in this? Bennett wondered. They're headed for Denver, Vince commented. We can take them down, Bennett told them. We won. But the planes didn't come to Denver. They flew out in a wider pattern. Where are they going? Vince asked. Whoa, he shouted as one of the planes crashed to the ground. Guess they didn't solve the problem completely, Bennett remarked. Where are they going? Vince asked again fearfully. The two men watched as the planes bombed a large pattern through the mountainous backdrop. Most of the planes crashed down along the way, but two of them flew back by, headed for the central region. What the hell just happened? Vince asked, hoping his instincts were not true. Bennett's radio crackled with horrific chatter and then turned to static. We've got to get back to the homesteads, Bennett insisted. Vince looked at Bennett in disbelief. His head pounded in between his ears. His wife was gone, and now maybe his young son and his parents. What just happened, Bennett? Vince panicked, frozen with disbelief. I think they bombed the whole route, Vince. All those people. The homesteads, Bennett said, gasping with shared panic. Michelle was still back there. He looked at Vince, stunned from the headshot. We got to get you to a doctor. Bennett half carried Vince towards the medical center. Wait a minute, Bennett, Vince said, stopping. He was slurring his words a little. What, Vince? The med center's right up there, Bennett told him. I know, but I can't go in there. You can't either, for that matter. Everyone will be asking where Erica is, Vince explained. She's gone, Vince, and you need a doctor, Bennett urged him. I know, but if we go in there and everyone finds out she's been captured, it might start dissension within the forces. Erica was just talking about the bigger picture. If everyone freaks out, it may really screw up the big picture, Vince told him. I think you're right, Vince, Bennett admitted. A lot of people joined the fight because of her. Cassidy died, and Eli's a fine leader, but Cassidy had charisma. If they find out Erica's gone, we could lose a lot of soldiers, Bennett agreed, thinking for a moment. Where's Nickleton? He mumbled, scanning the camp that was rapidly being established. Over there, he said, spotting the tent. Bennett supported more and more of Vince's weight as he led him towards the tent. First Sergeant, sir, the guard said, snapping to attention as Bennett approached. Help me get him inside, Bennett told the boy. The young man grabbed Vince's other arm and wrapped it around his shoulders. They entered the tent. Nickleton was there, looking at a map with Burgess. Bennett, there you are, Burgess declared. Is that Vince? You got a cop, Bennett asked. In the back, Burgess replied, showing him the way. He needs to go to the med center, Bennett. Bennett laid Vince on the cot and came back out into the main area with the men. Erica has been captured by the feds. What? Virgis couldn't believe what he was hearing. Vince needs a doctor, but neither of us can go in there without everyone asking about Erica. If they know she's gone, how many will we lose, Bennett asked. I'll go get one, Nickleton volunteered, strapping on his mask. There's a doctor named Stan that I know. He came down with the Merc forces. Find him, Bennett instructed. You got it, Nickleton declared, leaving the tent. What happened, Bennett? Virgis asked. They had us pinned, so half of us created a diversion, and the other half got Erica out of there. Vince, Philip, Hensley, and Kyle were with her. They found Staff Sergeant Justin Merkley and told him they needed a vehicle. Before they could do anything, Merkley and his men shot them all and took Erica. Erica got one of them, though. I found a tattoo on his arm with a barcode and this number. This must be their new refugee tracking system, Bennett proposed. How did they get her out of here? Burgess asked. I don't know, Bennett admitted. Vince got shot in the head and the chest. Thank goodness for ballistics and luck, but he was out cold. The tent flap opened and Nickleton entered with Stan. Stan carried a medical bag and looked tired from too much work after the battle. First Sergeant Bennett, how the heck are you, Stan asked, seeing his face. Well, you can't be that good if I'm here, he corrected himself, taking off his mask and shaking off the ash. We're in a pickle, Doc, Bennett told him. Who is it, Stan wondered. Vince, he's back here. The feds shot him in the head. His helmet stopped it, but it left a gnarly knot, and I don't think he's all there right now. They shot him in the chest, too, but his dad's watch and his vest stopped it. Where's Erica, Stan asked, looking around. That's why I asked for you, Stan, because I know you are loyal to her. 
She was taken by the feds. We're not sure how the people will react, so we're going to try to keep it a secret for as long as we can, Bennett told him. Oh no, Stan sighed, looking sadly at the ground. We've got to get Vince back on his feet, Bennett told him. Let me go check him out, Stan said, heading to the back. Any communications yet, Bennett wondered, pacing the floor. We've got nothing but static, Virgis admitted. The vehicles aren't running because of all this damn ash, and even the ones converted to the new air filtration systems failed. I've got to get news from the homesteads, Bennett told Virgis. Michelle, Daniel, and Nancy were there. Stars at the medical tent, too, Bennett thought out loud. I didn't want to get her and Stan at the same time, Nickleton commented. Thought it might look too suspicious. I've got it, Virgis declared. What are we going to do, Bennett asked Nickleton. For now, you have to let him rest. But as soon as he's up, we have to get you guys out of here, Nickleton told him. You two are always with Erica. If anyone notices you and not her, it's over. I agree. As soon as he's ready, Bennett responded, as Star burst into the tent. Taking off her mask, she demanded, Where is he? With tears in her eyes. Bennett pointed the way. She ran to the back and hugged him tightly. Stan shooed her out of the room so he could finish his work. Mom? Star asked Bennett. They have her, Bennett answered. Kyle? she asked. Bennett looked down at the ground for a moment. Then he looked into her eyes. He's dead. No, Star cried. Bennett went and held her. No, 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 she repeated over and over, pounding on Bennett's chest. You didn't keep your promise, Bennett. You didn't protect her? And now Kyle, too? Bennett held her tighter while she purged the feelings. His heart was just as broken, but he couldn't allow himself to show it. They had a job to do. They would get her back. Okay, so Vince was saved by his gear. But the other members of the group were not so lucky. We lost some really good characters at this point. Um, but it had to be that type of event, you know, for Erica to be captured and everything. So I was bummed, actually, to have to eliminate some of those characters, especially Kyle. That one that one really hurt. I really liked that character. So uh, hopefully, you know, you didn't shed too many tears or anything for him because... He was a cool character, and it was a shame to have to eliminate him from the story, but that's how the story goes. And in a post-collapse society, I mean, we're going to be looking at a lot of events like that. So, you know, that that's kind of how the ball drops. So they're really concerned about the their families out at the homesteads because this bombing event happened. They want to get in touch with them really bad, but communications are down. So today I have Dale and Lisa Goodwin back on the show to talk about communication methods in a post-collapse society. Dale and Lisa Goodwin have been on my show ever since season one. They've been miss with me season one, two, three, four, and five. So definitely seems like lifelong friends for me. And we've been out and we've stayed with Dale and Lisa out in Colorado. And it's just like family. It's just like coming home. So I can't thank them enough for all their hospitality and their friendship. In early 2013, Lisa and Dale decided to create survivalistprepper.net and become a bigger part of the preparedness community. They're not the overboard tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorists. They're just like you and me, everyday Americans that enjoy the freedoms that this country offers. Lisa is more of the prepper and Dale's more of the survivalist or outdoor type. And they write articles ranging from first aid to food storage to primitive and wilderness skills. Basically anything that involves preparedness and survival. So if you haven't been over to check out Survivalist Prepper, you really need to do so and check out the podcast. And once again, like I say, they're hosting the Preparedness Experience, www.thepreparednessexperience. Get over there and get your tickets. It's going to be awesome. If you want to check out Dale and Lisa at Survivalist Prepper, that website is www.survivalistprepper.net. That's www.survivalistprepper.net. So let's go ahead and welcome Dale and Lisa to the show. Today, I am here with my seems like lifelong buddies now, Dale and Lisa, <laughs> and I'm so happy to have you guys back on the show. Just always a good time to sit down and shoot the shit with you guys. So um, first of all, say hi, and then tell us about the event that's going on in March, because we're, we're all excited about that. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to scrounge some change up and get down there. Yeah, we. I hope you can. It'll be. It's going to be... a absolutely just fantastic event we've got we're doing it in vegas um towards the end of march march 22nd through the 24th and it's going to be three days we've got 
18 different classes that we're going to go through in those three days, or actually the two days, Friday and Saturday, with 10 di different speakers. We've got Chris Weatherman, Forrest Garvin, uh, Eva King, me, Brian, Lisa, just a bunch of people talking about a bunch of different subjects on prepping. But that Friday is what I'm kind of looking forward to the most. That's the advanced hemorrhage control class, which is kind of like a stop the bleed type class. But Brian works at North American Rescue and they're putting this class together for us. And it is basically like being, you know, kind of like a haunted house, I suppose, where they, <laughs> nice. they do the makeup, they do the, yep. they put you in real live situations. Uh, you do some classroom learning before you actually get to the hands-on part. But that's the kind of stuff that, that really piques my interest, that real world type, how do you do when the chips are on the table type situation. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, That's awesome. As just about everybody else too, I think. Um, Lisa's putting on a couple um, wound care classes. So kind of basically after you go through that whole trauma stuff, then you go to Lisa and you, and you get, you know, you take care of it for the longer term. Yeah. Making yeah, sure you don't get sense. infected. And, yeah. <laughs> so it's going to be cool. And, and we're, one of my courses there, one of my classes there is going to be on communications, which is what we're talking about today. So uh, this Perfect. gives you a chance to, to hone that up and, you know, kind of a practice run. <laughs> yeah, a little preview for everybody of what's going yeah. on down there, which is going to be awesome. Yeah, there's a huge difference between learning and doing. I uh, got mm -hmm. certified as an EMT, and we were down in Southern California selling rafting uh, photos. So for all the rafters that go by, you know, and uh, it's girls in bikinis and <laughs> cut off shorts. It's so hot. We have the misters on behind us, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we're young and not really thinking about it. This guy on a motorcycle goes by. His jaw's like scraping off the ground, and he ate crud all over the road. I mean, he dumped his bike. <laughs> and I ran all over there because I'm certified as an, e as an EMT, and I'm like, I don't want to touch this dude. Like, I don't know who he is, and I don't yeah. know. Like, it was weird, like, when it really came to it. I, it would have been different, I guess, if it was a family member or something, but – there really is a big difference between learning and doing. So the more reality that you can bring to that environment, the better in the yeah. type of scenario, you know. So that's awesome. And Brian's just awesome to you. So Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time. I can't wait for it. Uh, and you can get tickets for that if anybody is interested. You can go to thepreparednessexperience.com uh, and then you can just click the link on that page and uh, you can check out what we're gonna be doing there, who the speakers are, what the classes are. Uh, and all of that stuff, and then get your tickets. Getting kind of close. We only got a couple of weeks left. I know. Yeah. We got to get this buttoned up. I know. Yeah, that's. Uh, I, need, I need all my listeners out there to go over and go to my new subscription page so I can get down to Vegas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Come on. <laughs> You're helping everybody out that way, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping to get down there, so we'll see. Yeah. So today in our story, um, last chapter, Erica was. Um, abducted by Swenson and his guys and he's gonna have a little bit bigger role to play but today Vince wakes up and uh you know he should be dead basically he got shot twice uh in the helmet and his ballistics gear so he should be a dead guy but he wakes up and uh his children and Nancy are still at the homesteads and the communications are down uh the feds have a way of, you know, blocking signals and stuff. You got to love fiction, right? So they have no way of communicating to the homesteads to figure out, you know, is everybody okay over there? What, you know, they got bombed, stuff like that. So it really brought the issue to me because it's an area I really suck with. Communication. How are you going to communicate <laughs> with people post-collapse? And uh, I'm just hoping I have my family tight and I don't have to worry about it. But there's a chance, you know, it could be apart your cell phones don't work what do you do so i wanted to bring you on and and uh, give you the preview on communications yeah and that is a tough one because there's there's just so many different variables and so many different situations it's going to be communications is going to be something completely different when it's a natural disaster or something small scale mm -hmm. but as preppers we all tend to go to the Mad Max thing right off the bat. That's what we think about right. when we think about all this stuff. I do anyway. Yeah. Um, but sometimes Country it may wide not. wide EMT. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it may not be that way. So it's, it's really situation dependent, I suppose, what your communication plans are going to be. 
Well, what, you know, as a family and, uh, you know, what could, do you see as kind of like an essential setup for a family to have to be able to communicate in a post-collapse scenario? I think the first, first and foremost thing is not really even kind of a general thing, not thinking about this disaster or that disaster, but a little while back, we did a podcast on creating emergency binders. And that is communications with your family that, you know, not everything involves a two-way radio uh, or, you know, communicating like that, shortwave radios, all that. Um, just making sure a lot of us have families that not everybody is on board with the whole preparedness yeah. thing. So making sure that they kind of know what to do in a situation. Granted, when something happens, they're going to, our kids, especially, and a lot of people's kids, they're going to come to us. Okay, now what? You know? <laughs> but if, if we're not around, they need to be able to understand what to do or what we expect of them. So creating those emergency binders, I think, is, is one of the, the first things you should do. Uh, that yeah, I is, agree something that's communication, but people don't really think of it like that, but it absolutely is. And, and what we talked about in that podcast was a, uh, a procedures binder and also an emergency contacts and emergency information binder, emergency documents. So with the procedure binder, it'd be like, you know, say it's an earthquake or out here, maybe it's a snowstorm or the power's out, something like that. Yellowstone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I'm not we got, sure. We have to add that into the emergency binder. <laughs> I'm not sure how thick that would be. It'd just be like run, just in in capital we letters. Hide. Run, bug yeah. out, <laughs> bug out, and then hide. Get your mask and run. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but if it's a snowstorm, natural disaster, power outage, mm -hmm. something like that, at least they can just go grab that binder, even if they're not really into the whole preparedness thing like our kids are kind of but some are some aren't some are just they like to make fun of us about it or me not <laughs> necessarily like you, to make fun of you, they yeah. like to give me crap all the time but but at least lisa started it yeah, I, know. I know i know <laughs> but he's he's the scapegoat so uh, it works perfect right. for yeah. me. i'm the one with the website so <laughs> oh gotcha. gotcha and he's he's the one that bought the gas mask so I think oh, it's kind of. Well, boom. I bought that for Kyle because he gives me a hard time. So I figured I'm buying you a gas mask for Christmas. Yeah, you like that. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I doubt if he still has it. But, but anyway, in situations wow. like that, they can grab the binder and know, yeah. okay, here's a step-by-step -step guide of, okay, I need to go make sure that the gas is shut off or, you know, it, that Which would be Which is really important stuff. Yeah. 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 Or either that or train them, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So that they know where these things are, you know, be, if an emergency does happen, it's like, okay, this is where the natural gas is. This is how I shut it off. This is the water, you know, into the house. This is where I shut, shut that off. This is the well pump. This is what you do with that. So having them actually practice kind of like what we were talking about the hands -on with learning. the hands-on learning, the more that you actually put that into practice and, and do it, it makes it easier so that when an emergency does arise, You've already done it once, so you can kind of focus on that, and I think it kind of takes some of the pressure off of you when you are in a situation, because if you've never done it before, and you've got all of this stress on your shoulders, and then you're trying to do that, I mean, you're going to, panic is going to set in, but if yeah. you have, if you've done it at least once or twice, then you can concentrate on that, hopefully relieving some of the panic. Well, that and, you know, like if, if a kid's never went and found the shutoff valve or whatever, they, they, in a grid down type situation, they can't text you. So it's not going to be like, hey, man, I've looked for a half an hour. I can't yeah, find a right. shutoff. Yeah, they're just going to I can't be, get it to turn. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 That's so true. that's a very good point. Yeah. All the chatter. So how about for news and stuff like that? Like if we didn't have the internet and uh, it, it was just a small scale disaster, you know, earthquake, localized snowstorms, stuff like that. What do you suggest that a family has to just receive information from the outside world? Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of different options for that. Ham radio is one that usually comes to everybody's mind. That takes a whole lot to get into uh, and a whole lot of work to, anybody can buy a, a little Baofeng radio, mm -hmm. uh, but actually knowing what to do with it, the frequencies, who's using it and all that stuff is a little bit more complex. Right. Uh, but just the basic shortwave radios. Uh, maybe even, you know, it really, like I said, it's, disa it's disaster dependent. So, but 
Like the screen. little emergency radio ones? Yeah, you, you get the ones that are hand crank. Uh, some yeah. of them are even solar, so you can charge them by solar power. Uh, so I'm going to be doing an article on this here in the near future because there's, you think it's pretty basic. You just get a little radio, AM radio or whatever, and tune it. But a lot of them, yeah, a lot of them do different things. Some are better than others. Uh, some of them have just the basic NOAA radio, uh, which is, you know, that would be good. Yeah. Because you get that emergency information. So that's an absolute must on one of those shortwave radios. But, you know, some of those, and if you have the right antenna and stuff, you can get uh, states away. You can get, you know, continents away. Uh, granted, if you're talking to somebody in Portugal, you're not going to know what the hell they're saying. <laughs> right. Or if you're listening, you can't talk on those. But if you're listening, yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know, they'll, they'll be, if it's something a couple States away and you can get information about what things look like there, that's all, you know, stuff, the more information you have, the better about what things are going on. So, and that, that all depends on, is that a pretty like solid line of communication? Like, um, you know, what would really be, what would take out those sources? You know, um, obviously it'd have to be, if an EMP hit, you know, everything's screwed, but like. You know, it, that seems pretty reliable to me. Like, it's pretty fail-proof. Kind of. Um, it, it really depends on who's transmitting. It, what, if they have the capability, if their stuff got fried, then nobody's going to be transmitting. But mm -hmm. uh, it just depends on their location, what happened in their location, um, who's able to transmit. Government agencies will probably, you know, for whatever that's worth, they'll probably <laughs> be able to, to transmit and let people know what's going on and what the quote unquote. Here is your local FEMA camp. Yeah. You yeah. Know, to the designated location. Yeah. What the quote unquote safest thing to do is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Run. <laughs> FEMA camp's up, some, up north, so we're going down south. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. But yeah, it just depends. I mean, ham radio is good because some of these guys, especially preppers, are planning for that EMP type thing. So they have the, the backup power, the solar stuff. Um, granted, you're not going to be able to, you won't be able to use repeators, which is basically a, extends like your range. Yeah, basically. Yeah, like, like a, picks up the signal and rebroadcasts it kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Those probably wouldn't be, an EMP would completely wipe that stuff out. Some of those have backup battery, backup battery power, mm -hmm. uh, but it depends on how long the situation is. Uh, ham radio is a lot of the a lot of the guys that help with emer uh, natural disasters and stuff use ham radio because in areas where the you know the flooding like katrina and stuff like that where that the electronics are down the, the cell towers and all that ham radio is able to these guys are able to talk back and forth and relay that information to the emts the fire department and stuff like that nice so, well, and even nowadays with all the tracking and all that crap, even using cell phones and stuff like that. Oh, fair I mean, enough. Yep. Is, you yeah, know, some, is some sort of disaster, but the grid is still up and they're going to want to make sure that they have the phone tower still up. That way they can, you know. Track everything. If yeah, they're I mean, like coming no, through the door, get them. rid of your phone ASAP. <laughs> Just hug yeah, that thing, destroy it, kill it, put it in water. <laughs> yeah and that's you know honestly there's a lot of things that we look for as far as ways to encrypt our the little messaging apps and and oh, you know, huh. doing different things so they can't track every damn thing we do which they basically can they do anyway yeah. yeah you'd have to use cash for everything you'd have to use you know no no not even a landline but you know you'd have to use have your whole family have uh two-way radios and that's how you communicate <laughs> right <laughs> Within yeah. a two-mile radius, right? Yeah, depending on the depending radio, on the yeah. Radio. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, they don't go as far as the manufacturers like to say they go. Yeah, right. Is or, that you have to have clear line of sight? The little kid ones, mm -hmm. you're like, hello, Christian. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the ones you get like 50 feet away, those are FRS. The ones you get 50 feet away and it's... <laughs> uh -huh. But they like, look ah. cool. Yeah. They're, they're cool oh. when you're eight. <laughs> what, what about like what the um, police officers have and EMS has with their little, their like walkie talkies that are like this big? Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what they use, but all the radio frequencies are basically the same. So there's a set of frequencies allocated to the police, uh, EM, EM, EMTs and all that stuff that ham radio operators or uh, amateur radio operators can't use. They can't get on those. Same with like AM radio. You, you'll never turn on your AM radio and hear somebody 
talking on a ham radio, right? Right. Mm -hmm. That's allocated to AM radio and then FM too. It's all a big part of that band. So yeah, they exactly. use, um, probably have, you know, they have the antennas, they have the better equipment. They want to make sure that regardless where they are in the city, they can communicate with each other and back to the station. So they've got that infrastructure set up where the average ham radio guy, like me out here, I'm depending on the repeater that's 50 miles away. That's my infrastructure, basically. <laughs> got you. So if something were to happen to that repeater, then that would not be very good. My range is basically our neighborhood. Wherever I can get with the antenna on my roof, that's as far as I can get. Got and you. what what they do with ham radio is hopefully you somebody can get that broadcast, and it's like daisy chaining it. So they can reach somebody else further along. So they All take right. the message, pass it along. It's they, telephone they have, tag. It yeah, is. They have uh -huh. actual contests like that where – Crazy. Uh, yeah, with the, a friend of mine, Jeremy, in the, uh, the Facebook group, actually – I think he lives in Illinois or something – actually got a message to me. One of my neighbors that lived um, uh, a couple blocks away actually came to the door and said, hey, here's a message from blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh. That's okay. awesome. Yeah, so they have contests and they do stuff like that. In an SHTF situation, I don't know how much I'm relying on that. I mean, I mean that's Darren and Sabrina leading the way right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, and I don't I don't know if like if we were in a, you know, some emergency situation, <clears throat> I don't know how much I would trust someone coming to the oh. door. You know, because I have a you... message for you. From... Yes. Uh -huh. Well, if you have your, I didn't have my radio on. I, oh, I haven't yeah. used my radio in a while. So if I had my radio on. You would have got the yeah. yeah, they have these nets. Where but they... how much do you even trust the message on the radio? Ooh. Yeah, there you go. Right? I mean, how do you know? It would really depend on, on who's delivering it. Yeah. Yep. So as preppers, if you get into, that's the one good thing about getting into ham radio now. You build those contacts. You, you learn about Fair all this enough. stuff. And then. Yep you know, it's a reliable source rather than just some Yahoo. Hey man, I'm stuck down here on, why don't you come help me out? I've got this and that for you. If you come help me out and I'd be like, no, no. thank you, buddy. No. Yeah. I, I get, I think of scenes from the walking dead and crap in my head when I think about <laughs> stuff like that. I don't do zombies. So I didn't want to watch. Yeah. Walking dead. <laughs> I was like, ah. So he's like, oh, your book starts the same way. I'm like, I never even seen it. So I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Okay, so what? Uh, let's do a definition of what is ham radio. Ham radio, I, I, the ham isn't an acronym. Um, I don't know exactly where they came up with the term ham radio. <laughs> it's actually amateur radio. Um, they used it way back, you know, right after, you know, after the telegraph and all that stuff. Maritime, you know, the ships and stuff, they mm -hmm. used it uh, back then. Nowadays, we have so many different things that it's more of a hobby than actually <laughs> used. Uh, so I don't know where ham came from. Maybe it's hobby, amateur. I don't know what the M would be. I don't either. I, I mean, I'm <laughs> sure you could Google it and figure out some stuff, but I, I've never really You've put never any Googled thought it? into it. Yeah. yeah. I think I have once, but I don't, it, it didn't sink into my head. So it couldn't yeah. have been that important. It wasn't <laughs> worth it enough to remember, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> no, it wasn't on a test. So, <laughs> yeah. Didn't matter. Okay. And you have to actually take a test and everything to be able to speak on it, right? Yeah, the different types of radio. Ham radio is by far head and shoulders the best type of radio for preppers because there are just so many different things you can do with it uh, from just the basic communicating with your family and stuff mm -hmm. to the actually uh, maybe different counties or different states. depending. So on if you had a radio there and I was in a vehicle by you, obviously, because I'd have to be kind of near unless I'm going to skip a message over to you from far away. Yeah. <laughs> so you can have it in your car kind of thing? Like, can is this a hand yeah. or something you can take in your car? And Yeah, you could. Um, and ham radios, GMRS, all those radios will be able to do that when you're in that, you know, mile range. So if you're, okay. you're say you're in a group of people traveling to a bug out location, um, you can communicate between cars, CB, kind of the same lines as CB radio. Or if you had scouts out ahead or whatever. Yeah, you can communicate. It's just that when you get further out, the GMRS and stuff is not going to cut it. But, and I, GMRS is Global uh, Mobile Radio Service, something like that, I think. Uh, okay. But basically, ham radio, you take, you take the test uh, and you get your license for 15, five or 15 years. I can't remember now. It's been, it's got to be more than five because it's been five years since I've had mine. So, um, and it's 
each person has to be licensed. So that means Elisa is not allowed. She can listen to the ham radio. She can play with it. She can't broadcast on it. I can't say anything. Which is not good when you're thinking about your whole family and getting them used to the, the radios and all that. Oh, fair that's enough. Why, yeah, like practice ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. that's why GMRS, I, I think, is better. You don't yeah. have the options that you do with ham radio, but you get you pay like $65 for a license, and I believe that's the one that's five years. But that okay. covers everyone in the family, uh, everyone oh. in your extended family. So like our kids off at school they would still be covered. Not that we would be able to communicate with them 15 miles away, but um, they would still be covered. But what it does is it gives like Lisa an opportunity to learn how to use the radio. Uh, right. the, it's only, it's only got um, a few, I think 10 different, 10 or 15 different frequencies that you can use for GMRS. Okay. Uh, so as when we're talking about the coded messages and all that and people listening in, GMRS, not all that great because... Yeah, you got to uh, have the codes. Yeah, one of one uh, of 10 channels this dude's going to be on, so all I got to do is figure that out. <laughs> right. But it is good for the whole family because they learn how to use those different things and um, rather than a, some sort of SHTF event and then all of a sudden they have to pick up a ham radio and figure out how the hell to use it. Not going to happen. That's hard, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's hard. Cause even, I've seen them. It looks complicated. Yeah, it's like, and you can't just like lisa would get, click the button break a breaker right before she gets taken out yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe that'd buy you a few seconds because the dude trying to attack you would probably be laughing his ass <laughs> <laughs> told, told you i'm comic relief yeah. this chick has no idea what she's doing here <laughs> But that also could give me a couple of seconds to distract him because he'd be laughing at me so hard with that. He wouldn't see my little pew pew gun in my uh -huh. hand and, you know. Your little 22 that you'd have to yeah. empty the whole clip and hope you uh -huh. took him out. I hey, I'm with, I'm with Lisa on it. Don't be preaching to the choir on that one. <laughs> yeah, I love my little 22. Me too. That's, it's you amazing. Can, you can uh -huh. carry the most amount of ammo with 22. Yep. If you got a bug out, dude, you can take thousands of bullets with you. It's, and it's, it's no cheap to deal. play with too. Yep. Target yeah. practice yep. and all yep. Yep. Then and then I have the same exact ammo for my Ruger 1022. So that's all small game hunting. You can take a deer out as long as you put it in the eye. Yep. You know, either hit or you don't. Yeah, to have be a good shot. But yep. it's all the same ammo, you know. So that's yep. sidearm and rifle with the same exact ammo, which you can carry a ton of, and it's easy. Yeah, yep. and it's so. so affordable because I got him for Christmas. We got. It. Um, and I had the kids get him ammo too. So I was like, make sure you get a lot of the 22 LR because, you know, that's what my gun is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but uh, that well, was so much more affordable than I bought him his fancy. The 223 two, three is like oh. almost a buck around. It was so Where the, the 22 LR is like 25 cents. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I like, was, a box of and, that. You know, the, tw the 1022s, you can get pretty, pretty good. Uh, if you're not in California, you can get pretty good <laughs> magazines for them. And, yeah. uh, you know, then my handguns are Ruger too. And I love them both. I can hit our money with those. So mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes it comes down to what you're most comfortable with too. Yeah. Yep. And that's why he, I think that's why you, we, we got the 22 for me because I have a nine millimeter, a little Ruger and, but it, I just, I don't like it. Yep. Just and, too much. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's going to be better if you actually are willing to shoot it. Yeah. Now, yep. I guess in a in a situation where it was an absolute necessity, that's the last thing going to be on your mind. Is when the, adrenaline kicks in, kick, yeah. I can my it. my pistol only weighs a pound. You know, yeah. it weighs a pound. I mean, so adding that to my gear, super easy. No, yeah, that's my nice. rifle's really lightweight as well, and uh, you know, I'm super money with my rifle. And then um, that's even my concealed carry weapon. Mm-hmm. I, lo so. I love my little 22. It's awesome. Yeah, the AR is fun, but the 223, when you go to the range, it doesn't take long to blow through uh, I know. 60 bucks. I know. <laughs> so you just get get off course. I know. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the, well, the guy, when I got my concealed carry anyway, because I have so much self-defense knowledge, he's like, you would literally have to be, like, being put into a trunk, mm -hmm. and the trunk is closing. For you to pull out a weapon and justify using a gun against somebody because you know so much self-defense and other ways to. Yeah. What, why the hell did you let him put you in that trunk in the first place? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I, wouldn't have, I, I ain't going to no trunk. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
I'm just getting more badass style than I know jujitsu too. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> It's this, is, this, is, this is why we have Sarah. We got to get to Sarah and make sure she's uh, in our group. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. I will never be a victim ever. No, no. Okay. So, how about CB? Because remember, we used to all like see the big antennas waving in the yeah. wind and, you know, the truckers all got it going on and everything. So, what about so, CB? I guess what I'll do is I'll explain the differences that between all of them. Uh, we kind of. Yeah. I was kind of going there, and then we got. Yeah, we got I'm sorry. To squirrel, about guns. squirrel moment. Sorry. Yeah. But but yeah, CB as well. And I don't know as much about CB as I do the other stuff because it's just something I've never. It, it's when I think of that, I think of Smokey and the Bear. Uh, uh, right, and the, the Bandit. Bear. Yeah, and the Bandit. And the Bandit. Smokey yeah. and the Bear. <laughs> Only you can prevent wildfires. It was, <laughs> it was BJ and the Bear and Smokey and the Bandit. But yeah, Smokey and the BJ Bear. BJ and the Bear. Whoa, that sounds like a different kind of movie there, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. You guys never watched that show? Wasn't it a movie? No. You guys were probably watching Charlie's Angels. Was like was dinosaurs. I probably wasn't even born yet. <laughs> woman. No, you probably weren't. Yeah, <laughs> woman. But anyway, I think of those those truckers and and stuff like that. So they do have their. I mean, they are useful. But I think there's ham radio is a better option for preppers anyway. Um, I think these other radio services better than CV because they're mobile, because they're mm -hmm. handheld. You can get a handheld CV as well, but there's there's not. They're far and few between, I, I believe. I right, it's more like just more gear set up for it. Yeah, it's yeah, it in your cars and stuff like that is what a CB is, and you can have it in your home too. Um, but oh, we used to use them on the boat too. Uh, when did we were you? Out, yeah. yeah, on the Great Lakes and stuff. But GMRS, I think, is the second best, and that's more for if you want your whole family to do it. It's mm -hmm. lower. You know, you don't have to take a test. You just pay the 65 bucks, basically, and then buy your radios and you're good to go. Um, but it's got a better range than FRS, which is the family radio service, which is basically a walkie-talkie. Um, okay. Uh, a little bit better than the walkie-talkies we played it with was, as kids, but they're the ones you go to Walmart and you see on the shelves. You can go take camping and stuff like that. Uh, but GMRS is a little bit better than that. Some of them have, depending on the radio, some of them have, uh, pretty good range. Uh, GMRS are better in like urban areas where there's concrete structures and stuff like that. Uh, whereas MERS, the, the multi-use radio service, preppers don't use a whole lot of those. Uh, some people probably don't even know what MERS is. Yeah, I well, like I said, I didn't even hear about it until I started researching yeah. for what am I, what, what is, <laughs> what are the communication yeah. routes here even? What are the options? Yeah. And I think like the people that use those, and I could be wrong about this too, but like ski patrol uh, out in the wilderness, people like that use the MERS and they're a different allocation of channels as well. Um, so MERS is, you know, for preppers, I think it's ham radio is by far the best, but not the best for a lot of people because. There's a learning curve. Yeah. GMRS I think is the best for preppers in the general sense, as far as getting everybody to use it and all that. Then FRS is. You know, they're, they're about a half mile to a mile, not going to be real reliable. If you're going to go that, if you going to go that route with the two-way radios, you might as well pay to get the license um, and at least practice and learn it. In an SHTF event, license isn't going to matter for crap. FCC is going to come knocking on your door. Yeah. Uh, but the whole, the whole point of the license <laughs> is learning. They may to, be knocking on your door anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the whole point of the license is learning to use the system. So. Um, so it see, makes sense. Yeah. If you're into that, I, I suppose that would work. FRS, you know, you might as well go GMRS. Um, and then if you have the time and the, and you want to do it, ham radio. There's just so many different directions you can go with ham radio. Because they even have handheld ones for ham radio, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so GMRS has handhelds, um, and FRS are handhelds. FRS are only handhelds. Yeah, GMRS. and like, but with the with the walkie-talkie type ones, there's only a few channels, right? So you can, if you're close enough, you're basically listening in on what somebody else is talking about. Kind of, but unless it's, you know, you have the walkie-talkie, the handheld uh, ham radios, but they are programmed to receive a whole bunch of different channels and, and band, uh, frequencies, not necessarily bands. It depends on the radio you have, but whereas the GMRF and the FRS, FRS I think is only like five different okay. state different channels you can use 
uh, whereas the F the GMRS is 15. So yeah, you get limited to what you can use. What is a baby monitor frequency? What is that going? Because sometimes people actually can hear phone conversations yeah. from the neighbor. Up. Yeah, I, next door. Yep. Yeah. I don't know what frequencies those are allocated have like a to. Frequency? I mean, it, it it's the communication. So yeah, but I don't know what. A, uh, I don't know enough about all that crap to know what frequencies they run on and. Ah. No, communication is super important uh, thing, you know, during any kind of disaster or anything like that, people start freaking out. And I got to say, that's actually one of the coolest things kind of about um, Facebook is we have a community, you know, Facebook group, right? Mm -hmm. And so in our area with the wildfires and that, I mean, I can, my hill is very tall. So when I look out, I can see fires, you know basically a lot of places and you never really know like what their distance is and things like that. So, you know, that watch network goes up, Hey, there's smoke over here. Right. And then somebody else will be queued into that area. Oh my gosh, it's over there. You know, it's in this location. Boom. And now things move faster to actually get that taken care of because of Facebook, which is yeah. actually kind of cool. You know, that that's, if you use yeah. it in the right way, yes. Exactly. Well, yes. And that's what I was going to talk about next too is, is like prepper groups. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a quote unquote prepper group. It right. can be a group of people, your neighbors and stuff like that, that are looking out for each other. Yep. And you can decide how far you want to take that depending on the person or whatever. Yeah, you know, people are always yeah. stupid. There's yeah. stupid it's, on there. You know, so, but. Prepping groups is one of those things where it's really tough because – it, we all know that it, it just increases our odds to have people with us and, and have mm -hmm. a group and all of that stuff. But to get an effective group is not that easy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, it, if we were, if, that's why I don't have one personally myself or haven't tried to put one together because you get connected with people that maybe don't have the same ideas as you, or maybe they're a little more off their rocker than you, uh, or maybe they're just full of, full of baloney all together. Mm -hmm. and it just doesn't work out. So you can spend years and years going through this person and that person and giving away all your information, all these people that you really don't know anything about. So it's a tough and situation. stress. Stress is going to cause everybody, different people to react totally differently anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. So even if they were like the coolest people to hang out with, you know, you don't know what's, what's going to happen to yourself. No, yeah. no. Until you get put in that situation and you get, have stress happening. Do you remember, um, you the won't show. know. You wouldn't. You wouldn't. The um. Do you remember the show Colony? Not the um. The TV show, like where, where the, the drama series? TV show. The series. The series. They did. Yeah, that was like they put them in the into New Orleans after Katrina, and stuff like that. Like put that. this group of survivors in there. Yeah, it was kind of like a game show. But yeah, they, kind of. It's like put them in there and see if they can survive or not. Yeah, it was actually pretty neat. The first season was. was great. Second was. season, yeah. Yeah, and then I, think um, it ended I liked them that. both. And they had, mm -hmm. like, the Navy SEAL that was, like, watching them the whole time, and nobody knew it. And they're, like, yeah. starving. And the guy's like, here's all this food that I have just gathered from around you, <laughs> yeah. right, that you're not even aware of. So, but there was one guy on there, and he was super, like, survivalist guy. Like, oh, I've been preparing and la da da By the end of the show, dude's, like, in the bushes eating bugs. <laughs> you know, like, I, I, like granted you know he didn't have his family with him that was really hard for him he was missing his family really bad and stuff like that but these are the situations that people are going to be in yeah you yeah. know so you just and don't that's know a controlled one you know yeah. that's a controlled situation throw somebody into real chaos and yeah. you don't know how they're going to react <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly right yeah you don't yeah. know until you've actually been in that situation yourself but, but that is a reason why that communicating with neighbors and stuff like that, that's a big, you know, like I said, everybody thinks of two-way radios and stuff, but that's a huge part of it too, because all of that preventative stuff, that pre, pre post, pre collapse stuff you can yep. do, yes. um, all matters. Even, you know, communications with your family, whether they're into the preparedness thing or not, um, going through these plans um, and talking to them, you know, maybe even if it's kind of just like a fire drill, yep. they, you know, you do fire drills because, hey, it could happen. Same thing with, you know, practicing a bug out plan. How fast can we get an evacuation plan? How fast can we get all this stuff in our car or our truck? And are we putting the right things in there? Yeah. Um, we, we talked about this a while back when we had the fire that was getting close here. 
um, our daughter was home and we were. <laughs> and she loaded the car with what she thought was the important stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and in a true situation, a true SHTF situation, um, having family pictures is going to be great. Right. You know, from yeah, it's awesome. But when you, forgot, but her, when you don't have any food. Yeah, in her defense, she was like, what, 12? Yeah, yeah. 12 or 14. Uh, yeah, that's good, yeah. You know, she was young. And, but it uh, made us think about, okay, really we've, got, think, we've yeah. got some work to do here. Yeah. We need to communicate better about what. Well, that was Fletcher about. put my ammo box on my on my shotgun stock I'm like yeah dude how, what good is a shotgun gonna do us if it's broken <laughs> okay yeah. like you don't put uh, like 200 pounds of ammo on top of <laughs> yeah but that's that's exactly yeah, the that's, point that's the if point. we yeah. don't if we don't fill in the blanks for them and for yeah. you know even adults if we don't fill in the blanks they're just going to do it themselves and yep. try to figure out the best course of action and <laughs> you know and then we get frustrated because we know because better, we but they were, don't. Yeah, but we weren't good communicators. In the, so that's yeah. our fault, right? Clear yeah. communication prevents mistakes. We only, we only yes. realized that after we got all pissed off, though, and then calmed down a little bit. And then we realized, okay, you know, it's it wasn't really, it uh -huh. wasn't all you. Yep. Some of uh -huh. us don't even like to admit it, but, you know. <laughs> As a manager, you hit that a lot, right? You're like, yeah. why did you do that? Well, you didn't tell me to do otherwise. Yep. Okay. Yep. Well, fair point. Bad enough. <laughs> Sweeney Tom, get out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> Communication, right? <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, I mean, there, there just is a lot that goes into it. Everything we do on a daily basis involves communications. It involves the planning that leads up to, you know, the learning how to use the radios and stuff is all communication. It's not just having the radio and turning it on. And yeah. in these movies where they just click the button and all of a sudden they can talk to this person that's 18 miles away and clear as a bell. Yeah. yeah. yeah not going to work, right work that way. Yeah. yeah. Well, we, like I was saying before the show, we learned playing airsoft, you know, how, how important that is. Cause you go out with your team yeah. and uh, you know, so being able to communicate like seriously with a group is really, really important. It's hard to um, keep a visual on your partner to be able to do hand signals. Hand signals are great and you can understand them as long as everybody knows what they mean you know, it's a, it's a wonderful tool to have, but to be able to see that person maintain that distance constantly as you're moving down a hill and through brush and stuff like that is super challenging. Yeah. And that's all the, the coordination and the practice and, and doing stuff like that. Yeah. That's a, a great point you brought up too, that nonverbal communication stuff that, that may be in, in certain situations may absolutely be important. You can't be calling out to somebody, um, you know, you, yeah. you may need to. They know right where you are. That then. contact. Yep. Yeah. And the minute to, you open your mouth, boom, yeah. you're getting shot. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> and they have to be able to know what the hand signals mean. I mean, yeah. All kids basically know what the middle finger means, but <laughs> right? after that, I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, you're like, like, you know, <laughs> yeah. I was like, yay. And they're going to be like, <laughs> I have no idea what you're what? talking about. <laughs> yeah. So then you have to sneak over and try and whisper <laughs> in their ear. <laughs> or if it's one of my kids, they're going to, I'm going to tell them to go this direction or whatever. And they're going to give me the thumbs up and then they're going to head in the wrong way. And I'm going like, oh. <laughs> to That happens too. And then you have to stay with them. Yeah. <laughs> you guys can still see each other. Wait till <laughs> like, I get my you hands on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool guys. We should probably start wrapping it up or else I'm going to just blow over time like I always do with you guys. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I ever mind, but I'm surprised that we actually kept it within an hour. That's got to be a, a a new new record or something. I've been disciplining myself very hard on trying to keep my interviews up to speed, like on time, so that I get people there 45 minutes to an hour 15. That's what I try to. Of course, get. we were talking for half an hour before we even hit record. So that was that was quite <laughs> helpful. That was a good, yeah. good yeah. thing. Get everything out before we hit record. <laughs> yep, I was like, okay, go through the laundry list first. All right, now we're recording. <laughs> so, cool, guys. Well, let's go ahead and wrap it up. Why don't you go ahead and give people the link to get a hold of uh, the tickets for Vegas and then, um, of course, your website so that they know where to find you. And if they don't know, they're just really mm -hmm. not intelligent because you guys are on my show like all Wait, the time. I, yeah, we've been around forever. <laughs> Seems like. Season one. 
Yeah. 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 If, you, if you haven't been, you can go to survivalistprepper.net. Uh, we've got, we do our own podcast as well. We've got, I try to write articles a few times a month. I don't want to say every week because that just doesn't happen. Sometimes I get yeah. lazy, but we do our podcasts uh, every week. Uh, recently, we've been playing some, replaying some older ones because we've got over 400 episodes and it's just those really good ones we did that nobody's ever heard before. We want to kind of bring them back to the surface. Yeah. Um, so we do have that. Uh, the conference is going on March 22nd through the 24th. You can go to thepreparednessexperience.com uh, to get more information. Or if you don't want to write that big, long URL out, you can just go to my website. And on the top menu, there's a link to that website. You can go there. Uh, but it should be a blast. We've got uh, quite a few seats still available. Um, that is Hopefully, that's going to change here as we get closer to it. Um, because people love to wait till the last minute and all that. But um, we do have tickets available, um, but make sure don't wait too long because because then we may not. You're, you've got an open spot available, so don't worry about you. But we'll, we'll, you're small enough. We'll fit you in there somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, me and Brack, we'll just say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm thinking about scrounging up the change, like I say, and trying to, trying to just go for it. You know, life's too short, so. You got to have these experience, experiences because then exactly. that will help us prepare. And I think I have a link to the preparedness experience on the bottom of my website too. So everybody can just cool. go there and check it out. Yeah. So yep. thank And you. we do Sunday night videos there too, if anybody's interested in watching us blab for an hour. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're I have nice. to get on there and blab <laughs> with you guys. You should. Yeah. I, we've talked about it a couple of times and whenever I do it, I don't even think about it. Sunday no. night is a night I don't train too. So it actually works like most other nights. You're not going to find Sarah at home, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that night is one night that I'm actually available. Well, at my house, <laughs> I won't say available cause I'm always working. So <laughs> my house was yeah. like, serious <laughs> in front of my computer at least. Yeah, exactly. So, all right, guys. Well, thank you, Sarah. Appreciate being on. And we'll, yeah, I'm sure we'll be back shortly. Oh, yeah, because she's got more point. books coming out. Yeah, so that's we're right going to have to right. get ready for the next one. More season. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Dale and Lisa, so much for coming back on the show. Every time I have you guys on, it's just like epic day. Get to, you know, enjoy my time with Dale and Lisa. And I don't know what I'm doing for the fun episode at the very end of this book. So maybe we'll have to get together and put that show together as well. Maybe we can do it when we're in Vegas. I don't know. I'd have to look into my recording methods and things like that. Thanks so much to the supporters over on my website, www.authorsarahfhathaway.com backslash support. If you want to go ahead and become a supporter, I'd really, really appreciate that. I've got all kinds of cool gifts for you guys for doing that and uh, bonus items and it, the list just goes on and on. So head on over there and check that out, www.authorsarahfhathaway.com backslash support. Can't thank you enough for showing your support and keeping the changing earth world turning. Thank you guys for listening today. I hope you enjoyed the show. I did because, you know, down Lisa, enough said right there. And uh, the rest of this season is just going to be cranking. We got a great story going, lots of drama, lots of really awesome guests. We're going to be looking at a lot of different um, survival novels and things like that. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait to share it with you. So until next time, remember, dream, survive, thrive. Thank you for joining Sarah for this episode of the Changing Earth Podcast. Don't forget to pick up your copy of Day After Disaster, Without Land, The Walls of Freedom, Battle for the South, and Dark Days in Denver at www.authorsarahfhathaway.com. If you love Sarah's books and this podcast, please head over to Amazon or iTunes and let everyone know by leaving a review.